All right, welcome to the final exam review. So uh, first off, let's start with structure. So basically, there are three parts to this exam. Two parts are mandatory. Uh, the first part is basically like a regular exam. So this is going to be your short answer, uh, quick calculation section. So this is going to involve things like quick calculations, as well as ranking questions. Um, also conceptual type questions. Uh, so here you're going to find six problems uh, and you have to do four of them. Okay, so six problems total. And then you do four. Uh, second part then is going to be the medium sized type problems. Call these medium problems that are long problems. So they are typically less length than the regular exams. So typically these are going to be anywhere from one to three parts instead of something longer than that. So these will be one to three part problems. And again, they're more medium size and length, so not quite as long as the regular ones. Uh, so here there are going to be five of these total, so five problems. And you have to do all of them. Uh, and finally, the last part is just going to be an extra credit. <laughs> so again, this part is not mandatory. If you get to it, you get to it. If not, that's OK. Things happen. So uh, so that's the structure. So again, the structure is basically three different parts. Uh, short answer, quick calculations, part number one. Uh, part number two, then, is going to be your medium-sized problems. And then number three, then, is going to be the extra credits. So again, uh, you'll have two hours to work on it, and we'll all be staring at each other on Zoom, uh, just like we did for the fifth exam. So that'll be fun. Uh, otherwise, uh, what to expect on an exam? So what to expect? So basically, what types of what types of topics are going to be covered? Well, first of all, just like last semester, this is only going to cover exams one through four. So cover exams one through four. Uh, reason for that is we just had exam number five, obviously, yesterday. So exams one through four. So <clears throat> it's not going to cover anything from exam number five because exam number five was again yesterday. So it's less than a week from the last time from the final exam. So we're only going to have those exams on there. So I'm going to test you on the same material that close to when you just took it. So. Having said that, what then are the major topics? So again, it's going to cover one through four, but it's also only going to cover the, the major topics in the class. So the major topics. So what are the major topics? So let's go all the way back. So let's look at exam one first. So from exam one, the major topics are basically the two topics on that exam, and that are simple harmonic oscillation, as well as waves. So what are some subtopics in here? Well, separate harmonic oscillation, what you want to pay attention to are things like energy, uh, position versus time, uh, period and frequency, Um, so those are kind of the major things that we looked at there. So again, position versus time that your X of T is equal to a cosine omega T plus the phase factor. Uh, energy is then your kinetic energy plus potential energy as well as the total energy. Um, and then your period and frequency, all that kind of good stuff in there together. So look at those things uh, for the waves. What are some subtopics of waves? So again, waves you're going to have mostly, uh, again, position versus time. Um, what else did we talk about here? So we also talked about um, interference. Interference. So interference here, what I really mean is things like path length difference. So delta D then is equal to either N lambda or N plus a half lambda, things like this. Uh, path length difference um, when it comes to interference. <laughs> um, what else did we look at? Um, Basically about it, those are kind of the major topics there. So again, position versus time, interference, 
if you want. Uh, I can't remember if this is on there or not. I'll have to look at it more, but uh, also look at so standing waves. All right. So here you have your open, open, and then your open, closed. And remember, close, close is the same thing as open, open, just shifted by a half a wavelength. So you got standing waves. That's also part of interference. Uh, you have interference. We can write beats on here as well. Uh, we also have Doppler, right? And that's kind of on here. So those are basically the major topics then from exam number one. So what about exam number two? So exam number two basically was what? Electric fields, electric forces, and potentials, right? So here, so let's start off with electric force. So here we're looking at mostly Coulomb force. So this was basically one topic. Uh, another major topic on here again was the electric field. And of course, the relationship between these two guys, the electric field and the Coulomb force. Uh, and the final one was again, potential. So in this case, specifically the electric potential. So Coulomb's force, so here again, this is the force between two charged particles. So here we wanna look at things like superposition. So the force between multiple sets of two charged particles. So if I had like 10 charged particles, then basically the force on one of them by all of the other ones. So superposition principle. Um, so for electric fields, we then have uh, also superposition of electric fields. So basically at a given point, what is the electric field from all kinds of different other point charges? Uh, we also have continuous distributions. So continuous charge distributions. Uh, and like I said here, then the relationship between, relationship to the electric force. So how are these guys related to each other? So those are some major topics there. Uh, for potentials uh, here, again, basically the same thing. So we have point charges. So potential of a point charge. Uh, we have the relationship to the electric field. Oops. To E. Uh, what else over here? So continuous distributions as well. And also inside of here, some things you might want to pay attention to again and just kind of remember are particular electric fields. Uh, so things like a sheet of charge. Uh, what else do we have? So that was kind of a major one. We also had of a point charge. So make sure we know those guys. Uh, same thing here when it comes to the potential. Uh, we have the point charges. I think that's about it. So when it comes to the point charges, those are the ones that we really need to know. Uh, good. So basically, those are some major topics there. So again, Coulomb's force. So the force between basically just two charged particles and then the superposition of those. So how do we add those together, specifically vectorially? Uh, the electric field. How do we actually calculate the electric field? Uh, so what's the electric point charge, for example? And then superposition, how do we actually add all those guys together? So how do we calculate for a continuous distribution? And then what is the electric, the relationship between the electric force and the electric field? Those are just related by the charge, right? So these types of such scenarios. Uh, for the potential, again here, potential for point charge, relationship to the electric field, and then continuous fields themselves or continuous charge distributions. Good. Uh, exam three. So exam three, this was our circuits chapter. So basically here, the big things then were what? So basically circuits. So here are the major things are under circuits, uh, Kirchhoff's loop rules. Uh, what else do we have on here? So we also have, uh, we have what, capacitors. So here I'm gonna put capacitors. 
and primarily these in series and parallel. All right, and how do we actually add these guys in series and parallel, finding all equivalent capacitances and et cetera. Uh, same thing here for resistors. Uh, resistors, again, series and parallel. So how do we add those guys together? So of course, each one of these, you also need to know what capacitance and potential, how are these guys related to each other? So Q is equal to CV um, for the, we also need to know Ohm's law. So that's equal to V is equal to I times R. So these are all things that are embedded inside of here. Also for series and parallel, we have to remember what is constant in series and what is constant in parallel. So remember in series, what's constant is the current. And in parallel, what's constant is the voltage. Uh, for capacitors, it's basically the same, but it's voltage and charge, right? So, good. so inside of here are bedded, like I said, um, both we need to know extra things like capacitance. We also need to know um, <clears throat> for potentials. Uh, might also want to know capacitance for uh, parallel plates. So, right, uh, parallel plate capacitance. Capacitance, right? all these kind of fun things. Um, also inside of here might be power. Right? So might look at something like power radiated. So power lost in an electrical elements. So all of those different ones. All good, so this is basically the circuits one. So again, here, probably things like, again, capacitors in series and parallel, adding those guys together, or resistors in series and parallel, adding those things together, recombining them all the way down to a equivalent resistor, and then going all the way backwards to find out how much resistance and things are in each one. Now, again, these two here, just kind of point this out, these are only true if I have one battery. So I can only use these guys if we have one battery. If we have more than one battery, then we have to automatically default to our Kirchhoff's loop rolls. So this is good for more than one battery. So that is exam number three. So again, these are our major kind of topics from exam number three. Uh, and finally, exam number four. So exam number four was the magnetic one. So this was kind of the other big one from exam number two. So this was our magnetics. So here we're looking at magnetic force. So subtopics inside of here would be what force on a particle. So a charged particle moving in an external magnetic field, uh, force on a wire. and also force between parallel wires. So these were kind of the major topics in this section here, at least for magnetic force. Um, also magnetic fields. So here specifically for magnetic fields, we mean is calculating magnetic fields. And what we really mean here is actually Ampere's law. There is Bios of Art's law, but we can't really do too much with Bios of Art's law. So here it's better just to kind of look at this guy. Oh, that reminds me, going back to chapter two. Sorry, let's switch back to chapter two real quick. Uh, there was also Gauss's law here. Sorry about that. I can't believe they forgot about Gauss's law. So let's go back to exam number two. Let's add in Gauss's law. So that was definitely a big one that we learned over here. Cool. Right, so let's go back to exam number four. Um, good, what else was there? So it was also Faraday's law. So remember Faraday's law says that we can induce an electric field or at least a current or potential inside of something from a time dependent magnetic flux. So here we're looking specifically at the closed loop integral of the electric field dotted by the differential length, which is equal to the EMF, which is then equal to minus the number of loops times the time rate of change of the magnetic flux. 
Good. <clears throat> so that's that's basically it. So also with magnetic fields, another thing to pay attention to are uh, not only here, but also superposition of the fields. Position. And then here, some fields we want to pay attention to is, for example, the magnetic field of the wire. So I'll add these guys there as well. So good. And I think that's about it for exam four. So ultimately, too, not too much. So basically, all of these major topics will be represented in some form or another. So either it's going to be in section number one, uh, which is, again, the short answer quick calculation, where, again, you're going to be doing uh, answering either a short answer or doing a quick calculation, obviously, uh, or doing some sort of ranking questions where you have to justify your ranking. Um, but basically, and then the medium problems where, again, it's going to be one to three parts, uh, so not as long as a regular type problem, but pretty much all of these major topics will be represented in some fashion inside of all of these different questions. Uh, and then the extra credits will also be one of these parts, obviously. So again, so first off, it's only going to cover exams one through four. So here are the major topics again. So exam one, separate harmonic oscillation and waves. Exam number two, so basically everything electric. So Coulomb force, Coulomb's law, uh, superposition, electric fields, Gauss's law, another way to calculate electric fields, and also potentials. Mm -hmm. Exam number three is our circuits. So that's our Kirchhoff loop rules, capacitors in series and parallel, resistors in series and parallel, uh, parallel plate capacitance is a good thing to know. Uh, as well as power lost. So I'm going to kind of put these down in a little bracket down in here. And then finally, exam number four, that's our magnetic one. So magnetic forces in the force on a charged particle, uh, force on a wire, force between parallel wires uh, for the magnetic fields themselves. So talking specifically more about Ampere's law. Um, but again, also remember how to superposition. It's just the same superposition as before. And then the magnetic field of a wire. So also here, don't forget about all your different right-hand rules. So I'll write those down in here. So right-hand rules. So make sure you kind of go over all your right-hand rules. And then finally, Faraday's law. So, so again, structure, Let's go back to the structure. Structure is not too bad. So again, there'll be six problems in the first section. You'll do four of them. Now, again, if you want to do all six of them, that's fine. I'll take the, I'll grade the highest four of them. So I'll take the points from your largest four or whatever four you get the most amount of points on. Uh, but then for the medium sized problems, you have to do all of those. And there are five of them. So again, these are one to three part type problems. And then the last part, which again is not mandatory, is our extra credit parts. So, so just like the exam last semester, this is not made to be overly hard. Um, this is made to be more like, do you remember how to do this? And show me that you remember how to do this. So, um, so again, it's not meant to be particularly hard. Uh, so not as hard as regular questions on regular exams. So again, this is more, um, do you remember how to do this and show me that you remember how to do this. So, but again, these are all the major topics that we talked about in this class. Again, nothing from exam number five. So you don't have to worry about Maxwell's Ampere's law, uh, anything with optics or all that good stuff, anything with electromagnetic radiation. So that's about it. Um, so, now here, let's talk about things you can bring or can have with you. So, uh, so basically on each exam, you get one X card front and back. So in this exam, you get to have one index card for basically each exam. So that means you're allowed four regular size index cards. So four regular size index cards. If you've kept all of yours from the previous exams, just go ahead and use those. Otherwise, you can make new ones. Uh, or you can use an 8 by 11 inch piece of paper, front and back. So one or the other one. So either four regular sized index cards, front and back, or one eight and a half, or one 8 by 11 uh, regular sized piece of paper, uh, front and back. 
So again, um, you also obviously get a writing utensil. And you also get your calculator. Don't forget your calculators. And again, all of this will be done on Zoom. So just like the last exam, so you'll have to uh, log on to Zoom. And basically we'll all sit there and stare at each other for the two hours on Zoom, life will be great. And just like last time, so you'll have the two hours to work on it, but then we'll hang around after that. So you can do all your scanning uh, or just taking pictures and uploading all those things. And again, you'll stay logged on to Zoom the entire time uh, until you have everything long or submitted. Once everything is submitted, then you can go ahead and sign off. Uh, in the next few days, I'll get everything set up. So basically I will set up all the submission links and do all that stuff. So everything will be all set up. And also just like the fifth exam, so basically a couple minutes before the exam officially starts, uh, the exam will pop up right on Blackboard. So you'll submit everything right onto Blackboard. And yeah, so that'll basically be it. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, you can email me or we can do Zoom appointments, whatever you want to do until that time. But again, it's not meant to be difficult. So just go over all of your major topics. Uh, familiarize yourself with those. Best way to kind of get ready for the exam is to do a couple things. So one, just kind of go over your old exams. Um, I'll make sure all the home, all the exam solutions are up there. I don't remember if they're all up there or not, but I'll, I'll make sure those are up there in the next couple of days. Also go over the group assignments. So hopefully you remember from last semester, but basically the level of the difficulty of the exam questions are closer to those of the group assignments as opposed to the exam themselves. But, but again, if you can do all the ones that are on the exams then you should have no problems with the ones that are on the final exam. Uh, but also, like I said, go through the group assignments, redo all your group assignments, make sure that you know how to do all those. Uh, so going through all those things will be a a good kind of practice for the upcoming exam. Uh, as far as things that are at Pearson, I wouldn't worry too much about those. Uh, you can go back and do some old homework ones if you want to, but I don't think it'll be that. I don't think it'll really be necessary to do that. So just uh, working on the group assignments and doing the old exam should be enough for review. <clears throat> um, yeah. And again, if there's something that you want to ask for me to uh, if, if there's something that you want to ask, for example, if there's something that you should add your equation card or take off, just let me know. Uh, I can look at those things and then tell you yes or no. So, all right. So, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, make sure you let me know. If not, then I'll see everybody bright and early on Wednesday morning. And in the next day or two, I'll also send a link for the Zoom session for the exam. See everyone later.